In this lesson, we'll examine even and odd numbers and some relationships that exist between them. To begin, every integer is either even or odd. So these are the even numbers and these are the odd numbers. Some important facts to remember about even and odd numbers are as follows. First, even and odd numbers include negative values. So for example, negative 17 is considered an odd number. Next, zero is an even number, and you will see some questions that test this fact. Also, even numbers are divisible by two, which means that all even numbers can be expressed as 2k, where k is an integer. Another way to say this is that the prime factorization of an even number will include at least one two. Conversely, odd numbers are not divisible by two, which means the prime factorization of an odd number will not include any twos. And finally, odd numbers can be expressed as 2k plus 1, where k is an integer. Now most questions related to odd and even numbers will test your knowledge of a handful of rules. So let's take a look at these rules. The first set of rules involve the outcomes when integers are added or subtracted. For example, if you add or subtract two odd numbers, the result will always be even. Here are some examples of this. The next rule says that if you add or subtract an odd number and an even number, the result will always be odd. These examples illustrate this rule. The last rule says that if you add or subtract two even numbers, the result will always be even, and you can see this in the following examples. Now these rules can be summarized as follows. If the two numbers are the same, that is, they are both odd or both even, then the sum or difference will always be even. If the two numbers are different, that is, one is odd and the other is even, then the sum or difference will always be odd. The next set of rules involve multiplication. First, the product of two odd numbers will always be odd, and this can be seen in these examples. Next, the product of an odd number and an even number will always be even, as is shown here. And finally, the product of two even numbers will always be even, as you can see in these examples. These rules can be summarized as follows. First, the product of any number of odd integers will always be odd. So if several odd numbers are multiplied together, the product will be odd. Second, once an even number enters the picture, the product will always be even. So if we multiply several numbers and one or more of them is even, then the product will always be even. Let's take a closer look at these two rules. Now we're going to use some prime factorization to show why these rules work. The first rule says that the product of any number of odd integers will always be odd. For example, let's find the product of four odd integers. According to the rule, the product should be odd. Let's see why. To begin, we'll take this first odd number and find its prime factorization. Since the number is odd, we know that the prime factorization will not include any twos. The next number is also odd, so its prime factorization will not include any twos either. The same applies to this number and this number. From this, we know that the entire product here does not include any twos. As such, the product must be odd. Now let's examine the second rule. It says that once an even number enters the picture, the product will always be even. So, according to the rule, the product in this example should be even. Let's see why. To begin, we'll take all of the odd numbers and find their prime factorizations. Since these numbers are all odd, we know that their prime factorizations will not include any twos. Now we'll take the even number and find its prime factorization. Since this number is even, we know that its prime factorization must include at least one two. So now, when we examine the entire product, we can see that it includes at least one two. This means the product is divisible by two, which means the product must be even. Okay, now let's examine what happens when we divide integers. 
you will find that the rules for division are not nearly as concise as they are for addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Let's begin by developing a rule for what happens when we divide an even number by another even number. So we'll try a few numbers and see what happens. For example, when we divide 4 by 8, we get 0 0.5, which is not an integer. However, when we divide 12 by 6, we get 2, which is an integer, and an even integer at that. And when we divide 20 by 4, we get 5, which is an odd integer. So it appears that when an even number is divided by an even number, the result can be a non-integer, or an even number, or an odd number. Okay, now let's see what happens when we divide an odd number by an even number. When we try this, we see that the quotient can never be an integer. So we can conclude that an odd number divided by an even number can never be an integer. Okay, what about an even number divided by an odd number? Well, sometimes when we divide an even number by an odd number, we get an outcome that is not an integer. Other times, we get an even integer. So we can say that if an even number divided by an odd number yields an integer, then that integer will be even. Finally, what happens when we divide an odd number by an odd number? Well, sometimes we get an outcome that is not an integer. Other times the outcome is an odd integer. So we can say that if an odd number divided by an odd number yields an integer, then that integer will be odd. Okay, now let's take some of our rules and apply them. Let's begin by determining whether the following evaluates to be an odd number or an even number. Now when it comes to adding and subtracting even and odd numbers, we must do so in pairs. So for this question, we'll begin with this. Here we have an odd number plus an even number, so the sum will be odd. Now we'll examine this part. An odd number minus an odd number is even, which leaves us with an even number minus an odd number, which is odd. So our expression evaluates to be an odd number. Now let's examine a multiplication question. Is this product even or odd? Well, for products, we don't need to examine the pieces in pairs as we did for addition and subtraction. For products, all we need to do is look for even numbers. Since we have an even number here, we know that the product will be even because once an even number enters the picture, the product will always be even. Let's try one more product. In this question, we can see that there are no even numbers, so the product must be odd. Now some questions involving odd and even numbers will require you to determine whether certain expressions evaluate to be either odd or even. Other questions will require you to draw conclusions based on certain information. For example, if a and b are both integers and their sum is odd, what conclusions can we draw about a and b? Well, if the sum is odd, we know that one number must be odd and the other number must be even. Okay, what if a minus b yields an even number? What can we say about a and b then? Well, here we can conclude that either both numbers are odd or both numbers are even. What if the product of these six integers is even? What can we conclude with absolute certainty? Well, if the product is even, then at least one of these six numbers must be even. Finally, if we are told that the product of six numbers is odd, then we know for certain that all six numbers must be odd. Okay, so these are some of the rules you need to know when tackling questions involving odd and even numbers. Be sure to know them.